I think I have not emphasized this enough because each, I mean, I was a little bit uh, fascinated by how each of the musical elements is so new and so necessary and for pianists and so efficient and just inspiring, you know, that I don't think I emphasized enough that there is a, another huge big block of um, teaching pianists how to focus on many things at the same time. And this is what also book does and that's why after each um, topic the last part of each lesson is always practice when we uh, just following the instructions of what to do layer by layer in the piece that we approach and this is this has purpose this has purpose to teach you guys how to um, go through each layer and keep every single well, link in the chain, really, of the system um, to be able to perform well. You know, introducing pulse or pace to your playing and not losing phrasing, vertical versus horizontal line. Or um, later today we're going to talk about phrasing and there are many instances where actually in the main part of phrasing you might want to decrease dynamics. And that's a very high mastery, you know, expanding your energy while decreasing the energy of dynamics of your volume. And so to be able to juggle with all those things on different layer, on different levels of your building, um, you need that, that practice. You need to learn how to make sure that everything is there. I even have, I think, in the last in the end of the book four, when I talk about how to um, approach a new piece, for the first analyzing stage, I even created this checklist with the boxes that when you, for example, um, execute a certain stage of your analysis uh, practice, uh, you actually record yourself and then you watch yourself as the teacher and then you're like, okay, was the movement here? Was harmony there? Was phrasing there? You know? <laughs> Uh, just to, just to be to make sure that you are not losing anything. Another very good example, and that gets me every time. So when I have a lesson with my student, so I'm asking, so what's up for today? What are we playing? Oh yeah, I practice this piece. Okay, and then they start playing, and I was like, wait a second, what do you want me to check? <laughs> what are you focusing on? What should I check? The, like, um, what are you focusing on? And if the answer is like, well, I'm thinking about harmony and I was also like just checking if my elbow is good and um, thinking about where I am in terms of the form of music, the beginning or end, I was like, okay, if that's what's going on in your mind when you play the piece, <laughs> then you're completely out of the whole system. You lost all the links, you know, where, you know, the proper answer would be, and later we will talk about it. Okay, the first step before um, I, a few seconds before I start playing, I'm tuning into the, the character of music, the form of music, the pace. I put it into the sandwich of self-confident energy and correct posture. It's interesting because um, we will um, we will have to remind ourselves about correct posture the very last um, as the very last element right before playing because after getting all that salad and all this deliciousness together we might forget about our physical awareness which will be at the end connected to actually self confidence right now we're connecting it to intonation um, but at the very end is going to be connected to uh, self confidence on stage. Um, so all of that and then you get away and then you imagine the first m maybe the very first note just to bring yourself quickly to the, the world to the world of sounds and then you start playing and the phrasing and dynamics and sound imagination is going to be there but it has to be there on the back of your mind you know priority again very important. What are your priorities in your focus, in your concentration, in your attention when you're performing? 
Um, so this is what we basically train, how to keep all the links in the chain and then miracle happens. Everything becomes so simple, easy and, um, and also very secure. So I'm very grateful that actually you were practicing uh, all those small exercises by Cherny applying all these changes exactly following those boring ex I mean they are they are very dry but they're just instructions to bring in your creativity you know <laughs> um, yeah 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 let's go just one interval at a time maybe This is good, of course. Well done. <laughs> All right. Now let's see how you um, applied that in music. So when you were playing uh, this little piece, what did you try to intonate his musical speech? Just the right hand? Hmm. I tried. I tried both hands, and it felt like you know, <clears throat> in opera. Like, do it. Aha! That felt like this. Mm -hmm. Like both, um, both sing, sing, both characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it's not easy to do, and I l lose lose the sensation. But I think it's um, it's the field for further work. Yes, it will take time. And even for me, uh, I don't apply it, like I said, with every each, <laughs> with every interval in both hands. Usually just the melody or in, in parts where I think in the future I might need to be aware and feel the musical speech in intervals in big leaps, whether it's in the right hand or left hand in jumps. Mm. Or I, for example, if I need to play a very detailed passage, you know, Melka Technica, um, like, um, then I would be also very aware if I think that would require fast tempo and very controlled, maybe light touch. So I would try to introduce musical speech in those terms as well. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Was able, what I was able to read is that I definitely could feel how differently you pre felt that space between the notes according to the interval you were intonating with musical speech. I felt very good with your seconds, the sixth, the third, the fourth maybe could have been a bit more energetic again in your <laughs> Uh, but I definitely felt difference. Even when sometimes even my mind would start just wandering for a moment, uh, you would bring my attention back because oh, it's not monotonous, you know. Mm. Thank it's you very much for your feedback because this is what I need. Mm. Because when I play, uh, I a little like in mm, Kokum. Because I I I so I tr I teach myself to trust that um, the outcome would be real, that what I feel would be able to would be readable for other. And <laughs> well, you can check in the video later. <laughs> it was readable, and you know. And in I, the I, when when I, when I said that uh, in some parts, I thought, oh my God, what I'm doing. I'm doing something weird because it, I, I still feel so fragile and uncomfortable when in even play so uh, in uh, so slow it's like being naked on this stage you know and this is a, a further place of further work further mm -hmm. oh, and I want to try maybe play faster but if, good, if you, uh, play a bit faster also with all the sound imagination right you're gonna play with sound texture with harmony with dynamics and voicing yeah, there's not much harm when you pretty much everything in F minor, but okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that I look at it. But um, what I wanted to say, it might be additionally challenging to make sure that your hand is still passive. Yeah, 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 yes, mm. that was. And that try just try to find the balance because obviously it's not going to be fully passive. We talk about this, right? Mm -hmm, it's it's mm -hmm. this initial default state to convey to channel your intentions, but just to make sure that you try to avoid excessive tension, especially that might be in tense intervals like the second, the fourth, or octave or unison. So in those, just make sure that as soon as you touch the key, you really don't have to press it anymore, and you balance it with exhalation in in your muscle. Uh, I think it was good from what I've seen, but I'm just saying it for the future because obviously you will practice more. Mm -hmm. Watch for that. Okay, let's try faster.
absolutely normal to have a subtle um, timing fluctuations, those rubatas. Uh, this is okay because we have not. We, our yeah, goal we was not, was talk not about it in yeah. timing yet. Yes, it's normal to play like that. Mm -hmm. All right. So we all know what phrasing is, but let's talk about how to express phrasing. The first thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to say how I see this, how I see from from my. Mm. I I read your book. It uh, I love so much uh, those. Um, uh, I don't know how to say it in English. Um, markings. The 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 system of markings it's so cl so clear and mm, not grouping yeah it yeah. is like um, it, it it transparent transparent mm. so clear transparent And uh, when you do those markings, it is like uh, in a GPS, yeah, you, you have the navigator, you uh, create the path, the, the map. map, yeah, create the path mm -hmm. to, from point A to point B, and it has different uh, fluctuations in the roads, some turning right, turning left, go forward. And, okay, you have this map, but you need to go through it. You need to go through it with the momentum of your car. Momentum is the product of mass and velocity. I love that analogy. <laughs> I see now where you're going. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, the, the going with this momentum... Mm. I I I reread the translation of the word momentum. Of course, it is moment, или impulse, uh, impulse, impulse, and momentum in physics is mass, product of mass and velocity. So, product means logically, we logical product means like um, we if we have only mass but ha don't have velocity, there is no impulse, no moment. If you have only velocity but without mass, we don't have this inertia. We it not make doesn't make I sense. Have to, so I have to I have to I have to you know add here. Um watch Michelle Lau last video on her Open Square YouTube channel. She was introducing this amazing book about also clear structuring of phrasing. And um I love the words that she used. I think maybe she took it from the book but it doesn't matter. Gravity. That's your mass and velocity. So what, ha what goes out has to go down. And so that's why also my introduction that we have to start phrasing on the upbeat. Because upbeat brings with natural mass and velocity with gravity to the downbeat. So the gravity. Mm -hmm. And um, to leading to a point, we express through intonation and weight. We express uh, the phrasing, the phrasing contour. We express through variations of energy of our intonation. Mm -hmm. um, I even I even wrote to myself mm -hmm. uh, in my notebook. If you may, if you want, I I would like go to go on, go on. Phrasing is the ability to change the energy level of intonation according to a pre-built strategic contour. Mm -hmm. You decide, you decide, mm -hmm. where on your strategic path you will deliver more energy and where it will be less of energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you do a materialization of this structure through the action of changing the arm wave and the intonation. Okay, 
Okay, so your analogy with structuring phrasing is equal to having a map and GPS system and actually going through it and living through that map and going through it car, through, through the, with the car through it is equal to using intonation through which we express arm weight. And with arm weight, we actually emphasize, so when we need to bring more energy, this is where we use more arm weight. Mm, very good. Very good. All right. So in other words, if you just have a clear structure, but you know you don't know how to use intonation in your playing, which is singing with resistance and glissando, and so you don't know how to transfer our weight, then uh, all that will maybe satisfy your curiosity about understanding music better, like theoretically. But when you try to play it and express it, again, it will lead to compulsive tension in the body because it's not certain how you express what you want to say. So, since we talk about phrasing, let's also... Um, as we know, everything is about clarity, right? So, let's also clarify a couple of notations in music that sometimes might be related to phrasing, sometimes not. Hairpins and slurs. So, tell me about hairpins. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, we were taught to think about hairpins as like uh, the dynamic changes. Uh, and sometimes they are, they are but uh, usually they express the changing of energy of in phrasing. So if opens, we have the hairpins that like go in to expand, uh, we accumulate an energy and it would maybe slow down, do agogic, ag 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 Agogic, rubato, yeah, so maybe a little slow down. And if hairpins is closing, it is like energy is dissolving and uh, becomes tranquil more. Yeah, so with hairpins, right, so if we have clear indication of dynamics before and after hairpin, whether it's written diminuendo and the crescendo or fortepiano, that means we need to use hairpins as mostly dynamic in our sound imagination level here. So now, the hairpin without dynamics is basically a gogic hairpin, which means rubato, which means expressive timing, pulling, pulling and pushing timing. We open up energy and slowing down a little bit more, when the hairpin is opening, when the hairpin is closing, we're coming back to the right tempo. Because remember, rubato is at school. I was always taught when I remember women memorizing Italian terms when I was like, what, eight or nine? And we have to recite all hundreds of them. And rubato, yes, tempo deviation, but what that means? You're coming back to the original, to initial tempo. <laughs> You're not staying in that tempo deviation. It's like, okay, yes, yes, we're coming back to tempo after that. So, yeah, romanzo rubato means you went there and then you come back to original pace. All right. Um, but anyway, what, what I write in the book is that even if you understand better what hairpins is, um, at the end of the day, when you structure your phrasing, you might want to simply ignore that hairpin. And then, miraculously, when you're gonna make the full phrasing with motifs and phrases and sentences based on a very consistent structure of building slurs, then, uh, of, of building blocks, then later you might find out that those hairpins will kind of come through naturally within that phrasing that you structured. It's a very tricky thing. It's like, it's like, it's like when you have sometimes a very faint star in the sky, you can only see it when you are, with your peripheral sight, when you actually don't look at it, when you look a little bit 
kind of aside and then you can see it. But when you look directly to it, you don't see it. So it's the same with hair pins. So kind of ignore it so you could actually feel it later. <laughs> Yes, because otherwise, mm, sometimes mm, if you start thinking that they might show you something in the phrasing and then you... Mm, with the full structure of motifs and phrases and sentences, that might that actually uh, put you in the wrong way. Um, might you actually feel less comfortable doing those hair things than the phrasing, if you just focus on those and thinking that these are my guiding stars for finding phrasing, you know. So in slurs, is the same thing as the hairpins. The slurs are... Um, it's previous topic about articulations and about what I, they sometimes really are supposed to be. It's like changing the bow, yeah, and not not even changing an articulation. It's like the technique of playing. Mm -hmm. But uh, they In classical may or be style. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, but they they may be uh, at the, sa the same the same problem. If we follow the slurs, we build our structure over over unstand over non standard non consistent basis mm -hmm. not consistent yeah we build our structure on not consistent basis and that's why at the end we will have an uncertainty uh, anxious and oh i don't know what to do and mm -hmm. So even when, mm -hmm, so even if romantic and baroque style, we actually know that most probably has nothing to do with phrasing, but rather with the style of writing music uh, for fortepiano, which was taken from the style of writing music for violins or cellos. Um, even if we're going to a romantic uh, period, and supposedly we think that slower. And most of the time composers do create slurs just to show the movement of the melody that they want to they want pianists to express. Um, for for a meta perspective of phrasing, it could be misleading. Because um, it might sound contradictory, but like you said, to create something it has to be based on a very consistent blocks. Like for example, to get 4, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, so we can advance, advance, advance and progress if we have consistency. Well, in life the same, no? <laughs> um, yeah, and so our smallest, and even though our smallest block, which is Matif, is going to be always in the consistent size of one measure, and we'll talk about it later why. Then on that block, we can actually start creating a phrases and sentences that not necessarily can always have consistency. It could be sometimes two bars or three bars, or with sentences four bars or five or six, but you wouldn't be able to build that inconsistent, those inconsistent phrases and sentences without consistency of the building block of motif, which is always one measure across the bar line. Mm. Yes, this is like in nature. We, we can have all different types of forms, mm. all different types, but we have cells. Cells. Based on fractals. In biology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or even, even yes, I, uh, crystallic решетки, yeah, the, yes. uh, atomy, mo molecules, mm -hmm. they are consistent, it's first. Mm -hmm. But of course, we don't know, maybe something that's beyond that, but okay, we can, 
confirm that that in mathematics our system, yeah i mean that's what people say yeah. right scientists say that mathematics is uh, the, uh, the the may and the nature of the universe no <laughs> And of course, we're not living in a pixelated world, we don't see it like this, <laughs> but nevertheless, it has a very strong mathematical structure. And so that's why, basically, if you start thinking about slurs, and sometimes slur can be two nodes, sometimes half a bar, and then the next slur, one line, and then you're thinking, what is that? Is it actually also, is this slur represent motif or phrase or sentence? You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very confusing. Okay. Tell me how, so we were talking about how phrasing works, right? So we find uh, in the map where we're going, then we're using, um, then we know that we need to express more energy there, like energetic crescendo towards that part, and we're using um, intonation R weight uh, to express, to convey uh, that fluctuation of energy, the change of energy. Okay. Um, also important, what about the relationship between dynamics and phrasing? They, those are separate things. Mm -hmm. So this uh, this is a, a, a very excitement exciting exciting thing to experience. I I had already experienced this during our program when I uh, find the difference between intonation and dynamics and the sensation like my intonation going through somewhere there and dynamics and changing of into uh, of uh, sound color of the sound goes like on the ethereal level and the same is, this, is like this we can separate those tasks and make controllable uh, things like doing energetic crescendo the same time doing uh, decreasing in volume interesting experiment might be and results might be as well mm -hmm. interesting so you already learned that intonation is controlled here sound imagination is controlled there they are they do this on different floors and when you change one you don't have to necessarily change another one and so when you're going to expand as we learn phrasing you will express through this layer from this level in our building so when we express it through intonation and we're going to expand our energy in the main part, that doesn't necessarily need to bring the dynamics higher on that level of our building. And um, the most uh, romantic thing is always used actually the opposite, the expanding energy while decreasing dynamics. And they get a very delicious phrasing, very romantic phrasing. All right. Horowitz loved doing that. In Liszt, oh my god. <laughs> he like, really? <laughs> just go to any recordings and just listen and you will see the proof. Mm. Yeah, but of, co of course, uh, it is... It is uh, we, we cannot know what are they thinking, what, how do they control it. It is a mystery, it is a riddle. Intuitively, and, I suppose. And only, yeah, only intuitively. This intuition is only thing that could help us to to at least find the state that we can understand what other persons say, what other person mm -hmm. do, or trying to express and believe that we are right. But yes, we have intuition. We are humans. We have this not only logic but intuition too is necessary. So what is also important is that phrasing is helping our muscles to breathe. And that's why I sometimes refer to phrasing as a healthy breathing. So what, what can you tell me about that? About the breathing and phrasing? Uh, I like the expression ebb and flow. 
ebb and flow mm -hmm. and uh, you you uh, ebb and flow of energy pro yeah mm -hmm. and you provide those pictures of uh, stick sticky sticky persons with um, with the circles it's like traffic jams yeah but with two like uh, red is uh, inhaling and green is exhaling and mm, I, 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 I think I understand and like the concept like we can inhale you say the, th the sensation of in inhalation in the mind and exhalation in the body so this is like we are like a vessel vessel we have an inhalation and exhalation through body body is always inhaling still we ex well, no no exhaling exhaling body is exhaling and we are inhaling with uh the mind yeah we ex yes yeah. the combination so okay so what we don't want we don't want to constantly inhale red red which happens for example if our mind feels that we are reaching the most important part and this is uh, you call this energetic tension you know like you can imagine mm -hmm, I'm about to say something important mm -hmm. but if we don't have arm weight and we don't know is actually in that moment we need to expand and bring more arm weight then if our body also start being contracting, start contracting together with our mind, this is where we have this figure, red here and red here, not good. You don't get to express anything, you get compulsive tension uh, in your whole body, you might hurt your hands, your, your muscles are not breathing, okay? Now, when you use arm weight, then you accumulate more tension here in your mind, but at the same time, you exhale with your intonation through your singing with arm weight, and that get, gets a good balance, good combination. All right, so this is red and green. Also, the same thing happening when we have confusion about structure. Mm, so if we don't know how to structure exactly, if only thing that we know from our teachers is that give it more here or too much here you know okay the effect is quite opposite of clarity right so what do you get you get confusion is always me meaning uncertainty confusion meaning tension in our mind and because you also don't know how to express it you get compulsive tension because that's the when we want to make something more we obviously want to tense more that's uh, kind of like natural respond in our body make something more emotional <laughs> yes i'm into it you know <laughs> so again we get red here and red in the body we don't want that so what we want also a good example is uh we know again we, we get that red energy in our mind but it's not out of confusion confusion and uncertainty it's because we know that we're about to say something important. It's a, it's a different quality of, you know, uh, red. <laughs> and again, because we know how to express it with our body, we, it's, it's a green zone. Again, we exhale, so it's a good balance. We ex exhale, we express it through expanding arm weight and intonation. What we also don't want is green and green. <laughs> that means our playing is gonna be super boring, it's super relaxed. Sometimes, you know, I'd come to the lesson and I would play and then my teacher would say, and now one more time, wake up, you know? And then you're like, okay, I need to get, to get more tense or more energetic. Again, it's a very vague instruction, you know, wake up. Um, so yeah, so again, you, you, you need to have clear intention in your mind. Um, and know how you express it. So red and green is what we want. Not red and red, and not also green and green. And we have no idea what we're doing at all. Mm -hmm. This is a very 
clarifying explanation uh, of the concept of exhaling and inhaling. Inhale in your mind because we have intention. Mm -hmm. When we have intention, it feels like more inhale energetically, and then we express it through our exhalation of the body at the same time. And this is a constant circle, circle, circle. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's not not like this. It's, a it's like this, yeah. Mm. So it's, yeah, yeah. No, not like this, but like exactly. This. You inhale here <laughs> and express it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It is like that. And again, as I said, that's how phrasing helps us technically because when we play that ebb and flow is what we call the breathing, energetic breathing, ebb and flow of energy, that will be reflected in our muscles. So when we play, we never achieve a state of inhaling, inhaling in our energy when we try to make phrasing and then we really feel so, so, so bad. Or or exhaling, 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 exhaling to the point that actually it transfers to tension. Because you just cannot exhale all the time. And so this helps me, This you know, I can play one hour, two hour of music and I just feel so simple and easy. I don't feel problems with stamina or anything like this, like physical stamina. Because it's in the nature of constant breathing. Inhale here in my mind, exhale in my body. That's what I get in my muscles. Mm. So phrasing also is a good combination of logic and intuition. Um, you So, okay, well, let's talk about... Um, so, for example, when we're going to go to a stage of finding uh, main motifs in the phrase or main phrases in a sentence, we are really going to try to follow music and there will be three different methods of how to choose the main blog in a bigger blog. And that will actually be based mostly on our intuition, where when we find the length of, let's say, Matisse, you can do that even without understanding what music is. If you know how the bar line looks, you just, you know, blindly just take the pencil and always mark from the second note of the bar to the first note of the next bar, done. Um, so this is kind of logical, right? Um, so why did why did I choose? Why do you think I've chosen that motif should start from the second note of the bar and finish with the first note of the next bar? I give you a little clue. Remember, we talk about gravity, right? Mm. So gravity means that something can be lighter and then something can be more grounded and, and heavier. Okay, so we let's say in the bar of one, two, three, four, we can have a choice of one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Mm. Two, three, four, one. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, one. Three, four, one. Two, Three, four, one, two, or four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Now the question is, what is not dying? Which version of that makes you want to continue? Right? Mm -hmm. And this is the one, as again, Michelle Lau, I love her analogy when she said, you, how did she say? You lift the ball in the air, on the upper beat, so it could fall down to your arms again on the down beat. Yeah, and that's it, called momentum and gravity. So it's easy to start with the up beat coming down to the down beat. This is more natural um, for humans <laughs> or for anything in life. That's why two, three, four, one has more life in it rather than for one, two, three, or mm -hmm. three, four, one, two. Well, one, two, three, four. Mm. Yeah, we're pulling, the gravity pulls us to the next bar and we achieve mm. the surface of the sec of the next bar. Mm. So like this is 
Mm -hmm. With gravity we finish. So that's why we finish through the bar line leading to the interval. And I always emphasize the main part in the motif is not the note. The note is just the destination, right? Mm -hmm. Again, that's why I said it's the last interval across the bar line because that means we're talking about intonation. Mass and velocity. Mm -hmm. Where we use mass and velocity of gravity <laughs> and mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is our building block that never changes. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Or, well, in three, four, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, mm -hmm. one. In compound time, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. It's always, mm -hmm. always the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's talk about now that we use that as a building block, right? And so now we include two of the, let's say, motifs into one phrase. Mm -hmm. And then maybe two of the phrases in one sentence. So now, how do, because now we have a choice. We have a choice. Do we include two motifs in a phrase or three motifs in a phrase? Do we include three phrases in a sentence or two phrases in a sentence? And here, what, what method can we use to understand how to find the length of phrases and sentences? Think in terms of musical texture, even by just open any piece and just look at the piece. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to start a new phrase in the middle of the same musical idea or material. And also what you don't want to do, you don't, so you don't want to, you don't want to break that. You don't want to start a phrase in the middle of that, you know, musical idea. But what you also don't want to do, you don't want to start phrase too late when a musical idea already changed. And it could be by musical idea, I mean, it could be a, a symmetrical rhythm. Let's say you had You see, you have two different elements here, rhythmically. So that already can help you intuitively, you know, somewhere there should start a new phrase. You wouldn't start a new phrase in the middle of da 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 you know what I mean? And it's the same with the sentence. So look for changing of musical material, musical idea. Okay, now let's talk about the contour. Exactly. So now we know that each motif, again, let's come back to the building block that never changes. So again, just like the length of the, of the motif never changes, it also never changes what is the main part of the motif, which is always the last interval across the bar line. Again, you can do it blind, like without any music. All right, just. Now let's talk about how to find main motifs in the phrases and main phrases and sentences. Tell me about the three methods that we can use. Which phrase would be, which motif would be more important in a phrase? Yeah. The logic choices. Intuition is also involved, but let's talk about logic choices. Mm -hmm. uh, we can think about does the melody do ascending or descending? If it's ascending, that's probably it has some building of energy. So this may be a main motive. If the melody is uh, ascending as one, then if uh, we have strong articulations like tenuto or accents. We can think about uh, the color of harmony. We can think about what in phrase, in first motif, this may be a soft, open harmony, but next may be more tense. We can prefer to play more prominent the motif with more tense harmony. So harmony uh, Trajectory of articulations, yes, and uh, melody the, the melody, yeah, melody contour. 
Good, and also the register. Something could oh. be higher. Mm. Okay, Fruit yeah, so four. 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 Okay, okay. Four. but again, so this is the first method, and this is a very initial method. Again, it's just to give us a choice. Well, okay, it's like, it's like when you want to paint and you first take the, uh, the pencil and just make a draft. Okay, this is how it could be. Mm -hmm. All right. Then go second method. Mm -hmm. Second method uh, is intuition. So mm -hmm. logic part is like you may not be even involved at all. We can teach computer do this. Mm -hmm. But intuition is where you need to feel. So maybe you can sing it faster and find out what sounds for you more natural or play it. Yeah. So you need to connect yourself with uh, the music. Okay. Okay. And here also it would be nice to know what exactly even in intuition, like you said, yes, we can sing faster and play faster through the melody, but it's also nice to know which feeling intuitively we want to avoid. And it's a feeling, it's a feeling of pushing and forcing. And um, about maybe a year ago, I made a phrasing. So the melody goes, there's a one bar. I will put this, the, the shit music on the score, but you on the, on the screen, but you understand. And so in that phrase, I've chosen the second motif more. I sing it sounds with the second motif more. Now I didn't play this piece for a year and then I come back to it and I'm like revising it. I was like, what have I done? <laughs> that sounds so push it. <laughs> and so I decided to, cho to choose and I decided to make first motif more leading towards the main the first note in uh, in the melody and second motif less so and it sounds and you see so this so what basically we have this variant example of pushing versus natural and flowing and simple. So I want simplicity versus force. Yeah. So the third method is also uh, more less in, well it's a combination actually of logical and intuitive. So it's written in the book, right? So if you need to choose a main motif and the phrase, you compare the harmony of the last note in that last interval, main interval of the motif, between motifs. And you feel which harmony uh, is more important. This is the harmony that is going to be in the main interval of the first motif. interval of the second motif. So we compare this and this. And here now that you gather those two harmonies and you think, well, which harmony you feel? It's your interpretation. Which harmony for you makes sense to be more expressive? This? Well, the first is more open, 
Second is more closed, so it could be okay, probably first motif. But you can also say the first is more open, but second more tense. All right. And then maybe then you combine it with the first method, where, you know, remember the contour of the melody, we're going higher. And, and then here we actually... We, we falling down here. So it's more close. And then you think, well, okay, well, let me also think. Sing. Da, 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 da. 